Much of the kills in Fortnite happen at close ranges, it's just part of the nature of the game. Since building exists as a mechanic, fights typically end with players building right up to one another, and as a consequence, close quarter fighting skills end up being crucial for winning battles. What's up guys, it's Superman Dan, and in this video I'll be going over some useful tips and tricks to help improve the outcomes of your close quarter engagements. With how often close range fights occur in this game, being good at them is arguably much more important than being able to land a nice snipe or laser somebody in the distance. Close quarters are where the fights are a lot more equalized, and where the player with the more skill usually comes out on top. When played right, you can even go from being on the losing end to winning the fight. It's all just about playing it correctly, which we will show you just how to do. But before that happens, you know the drill. Visit ProGuys.com for 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the best of the best. We've added all new guide exclusive videos for pro members as well as all the up-to-date news articles from your favorite pro, so don't miss out. Click that link down below, smash the like button, and let's dive right in. Trap Usage Traps are easily one of the more impactful items during close quarter fights. Hitting for 150, the amount of damage the trap deals is seen as ridiculous to some. But regardless of if it's too powerful or not, one thing's for certain, they're way too beneficial in close range fights to not use. The first thing you need to make sure you do before getting into fights is to have your damage trap already selected. It's sort of a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how often it costs players kills or gets them eliminated. They'll go to put down a trap, but take forever to place it because they're cycling through campfires and launch pads, and by the time they have their trap selected it ends up being too late. Making sure you have the damage trap selected may seem simple, but it can make all the difference when it comes to winning or losing a fight. But what about the proper way to use traps? Well, pretty much everybody now knows how to avoid traps by running to the opposite wall. That's why many players have started trapping floors and ceilings instead. Floors are less ideal since all it takes is a cone or ramp to stop it from doing damage. However, the ceiling trap is much harder to avoid and is now one of the most preferred spots to place them during box fighting scenarios. When on the defensive, there are a few moves you can pull off to get a quick trap kill. The first is what we've all seen before, where you edit the wall, ramp over your opponent, box them in, and place traps on the walls. This only works if they're trying to take your wall on a floor piece. If there's a cone or ramp, you won't be able to place your own ramp, making this move too risky to pull off. Even if they're on a floor piece, a smart player will just edit their floor and drop down a level to avoid the traps. That's why a lot of players have started trapping the ceiling instead of their walls. They do that and then quickly rotate their ramp toward them. This prevents the opponent from being able to edit down or return fire while you wait for the trap to trigger. Usually the trap is enough to eliminate them, but if it's not, you can quickly follow up with another ramp edit to land the final blow. If your opponent's standing on a stair or cone piece, what you can do is go for a quick edit into a ceiling trap. This can be done safely without exposing much of yourself as long as you do it fast enough. The top right corner edit on a wall is one way that you can do this without exposing any of your body as long as you don't stand too far to the right. This one is easier to get the angle needed to place it, but won't work if there's no structure for the ceiling trap to connect to. Like for instance, maybe your opponent is just on a cone with nothing else. If that's the case, you'll have to do this with a window edit for the trap to place on the ceiling. Placing them with a window edit is a little finicky, and so you need to make sure you're aiming at the right spot for it to work. We recommend especially practicing this in creative, just so you can get the timing and angles down. Building between shots. Placing structures between shotgun shots is more important than ever now that the combat is gone. The pump just has such a long wait after firing that you should always look to be placing some cover in between. Whether it's a floor, wall, or ramp piece, anything is better than just standing there waiting for your next shot. However, the problem is that players are starting to get better at expecting the peak, and so placing cover in between shots without getting hit has become much more difficult lately. To maximize your chances of getting your shot off first, you either want to use right-handed or unexpected angles. Right hand peeking into placing builds can work just fine against your average player, but those with quicker reactions will still be able to return fire. That's why against the best players, pros would rather use unexpected angles and will often utilize edits to create them. Like instead of just ramping up on a guy and going for a jump shot into a floor piece, also known as the Tfue Classic, they might jump off the side of their ramp and shoot from there before catching themselves. That's much less likely to be expected. Or they might pretend as if they're ramping up, but instead of peeking over the top of the ramp, which would be expected, they edit their builds and fire through the openings instead. Building between shots is still really useful and should be done often. You just need to make sure you're not telegraphing your peak too hard. 
If you do, you shouldn't be surprised if your enemy returns fire. So in conjunction with building between shots, look to swap up and create new angles often so that your opponent has a harder time tracking you. Quick edits. When playing on the defensive, quick wall edits into a shotgun shot are one of the simplest ways to counter a player trying to break into your box. I say they're simple, but they're also really hard to pull off effectively. You need some amazing speed and aiming abilities to get a quick edit off and land the shot. This is what a lot of pro players excel at and is part of what makes them so dominant in box fights. We constantly tell you guys to practice your edits and that's just because they're essential in close range encounters. When making edit plays, you gotta make sure they're advantageous. There are a few ones that give you the upper hand, mainly consisting of those that give a right side peeker's advantage. But the best one in our opinion is the top right corner edit. Make sure you're confirming the edit while positioned behind the part of the wall that will remain up. Then jump toward the corner and shoot your opponent as soon as you can. After the shot, you want to reset the wall as soon as possible to get back behind cover. When done right, you'll be able to see your opponent and get a shot off before they can even react. As for why a top corner edit and not the bottom right corner, with the bottom right corner, your feet will show to your opponent before you can clear the wall and land a shot, so they're generally riskier. With the top corner, however, the room for them to react and land a shot first is much smaller. You don't always need to edit and go for a shot though. Sometimes when you're too low on health or your wall gets taken, you need to quickly edit out and create another box. That'll reset the scenario and give you time for your teammates to come help. Or if you're solo, it'll give you more time to further assess the situation and find a good opening. When you do edit out, it's advised that you exit out from the side opposite of your opponent. That'll give them less opportunity to place their own wall preemptively on your new box. It'll also prevent them from blocking you off of the wall if you're trying to go for height. After changes to turbo build made it harder to hold walls, turtling out into a new box is starting to become a much more common defensive move lately. When you're playing on the offensive, there are two techniques you should practice often that when used will help close out kills and keep you safe from counterplay. The first technique is replacing a wall, editing it, placing your own stairs, then editing the left side of it towards you. What this does is prevent your opponent from placing their own stairs as a second line of defense. The edit also creates the best possible angle to ensure you get your shot off first. I'm sure you've seen pros do this constantly, and that's just because it's the most effective way to close out a kill in these wall taking scenarios. It's not easy to pull off by any means, and that's why we say you need to practice it a lot. Mongrel, for instance, works on this move as a part of his normal warm-up routine. With the amount he and other pros have practiced it, they can pull this move off in the blink of an eye. They can secure kills while their opponents are still trying to place their own ramp. The simple fact of the matter is that most players don't place a cone or ramp inside their box preemptively. They usually wait until their wall is taken before doing so. Some players do, however, so you always need to be aware if there's a piece inside your opponent's box before trying to place your own ramp in it. Otherwise, guys, you'll just end up looking like an absolute bot holding your blueprints as your opponent kills you and wonders what the heck you were doing. Also, what we're saying here is that if you're the turtler in a fight, make sure to place a cone or ramp in your box to create a second line of defense and deny your opponent control. The other tip we have isn't really a technique, but it's something that you need to get in the habit of doing when trying to take walls or other structures from your opponent. You need to get in the habit of pulling out your shotgun or placing structures in between failed takes. Right after you fail a structure retake is when your opponent is most likely to try an aggressive edit play. If you pull out your shotgun in anticipation, you'll be ready to land the first shot should they make the edit. Not only that, but even just your opponent knowing that you've been pulling out your shotgun is going to make them much more hesitant going for an aggressive move. Sometimes your opponent will go for an edit play no matter what, which is why placing structures in anticipation can be crucial for keeping yourself alive. Like if you're trying to break into somebody's box from above, they're going to edit and go for a jump shot. This move is really effective as the player inside the box can use the third person camera to line up a shot behind cover. When the edit happens, you need to be ready to counter by putting a wall down. You could also place your own wall and edit a door preemptively. The door edit in this scenario provides the most cover while still allowing you to pickaxe your opponent's structures. It takes time to set up, but by positioning at the right angle, your opponent won't be able to make the edit jump shot play. In conclusion, traps are too powerful to ignore when in close range encounters. As long as they stay in the game, you need to be using them smartly during your close range battles. Building in between shots is still important, but players have come to expect most peaks by now, so switching up positions and incorporating unexpected angles during the fight can help prevent your opponent from landing their own shot. Quick edits are the bread and butter of close range counterplay, but they require some great mechanics to pull off consistently. 
Practice the techniques whenever you can, and always be looking to counter your opponent's edit plays when you're on the offensive. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be a part of the notification squad. If you have any tips that you use to help win close range encounters, let us know in the comments and we'll share them. As always guys, thanks for watching.